These are 17 times that One Piece predicted the future. Starting off with this poster art that predicts Luffy's Gear 5 awakening form before it was even shown. If you look closely, you can see Luffy cosplaying as Ken from Street Fighter. Now, I don't play Street Fighter much, but Ken doesn't have flaming hair. And I bet you didn't notice that he looks actually quite familiar. Yeah, he looks identical to Luffy's Sun God Nika form. From the hair, the eyebrows, even to the cartoonish art style. And it's not just Luffy. You can even see Nico Robin's demon form when she fought Black Maria, as well as Sanji in his raid suit. And even crazier, we have Zoro as Link from The Legend of Zelda wielding the Master Sword, which is referring back to Enma. And that's just the first of 17 times One Piece predicted the future. And the very last one I'm going to talk about is going to make you throw your phone across the room. So you definitely don't want to miss it. But this other Master Swordsman also gave us a shocking reveal. And he actually confused us One Piece fans. Because when Rayleigh comments to Luffy that hat suits you well when first seeing Luffy during the Salvity arc, we all thought that Rayleigh was referring back to when Shanks gave Luffy that straw hat. But later in the series, it is revealed that Gold D. Roger, the pirate king, King himself wore the same straw hat that Luffy has on. This creates a powerful connection between Luffy and Roger, hinting at a deeper meaning for Luffy and the potential impact he may have on the world. But did you know in the early chapters of One Piece when Shanks and Buggy were still cabin boys on Roger's ship, a mysterious figure is shown briefly hitting them on the head? At that time, this character's identity is not revealed. It's only much later during the Salbuddy arc that readers discover that the person who hit them was none other than Silver's Rayleigh, the former first mate of Goldie Roger. However, this character has the ability to turn his stories to real life. We all know how much Usopp loves to lie, but did you know that all of his fake adventure stories he'd tell Kaya are coming to life? Here are some of his lies that actually came true. Usopp told a story about saving a giant whale, and not long after, the Straw Hats later encounter Laboon, a giant whale in the Grand Line. Or how about the time where he said that there was a country full of dwarves, and later we see in the Dressarosa arc, the Tantata dwarves play a significant role in the show. And lastly, his lie about the giant goldfish with island-sized poop. We actually see that during the little garden arc where they actually refer to the island-sized poop as Nanimunai Island. And then Brogi and Dory kill the giant goldfish. Yep, it's confirmed. Usopp ate the story story fruit. But did you know that in the 2006 One Piece anime special, the Straw Hats were depicted as mythical animals and Luffy was portrayed as a dragon? Later in the series, it's revealed that Monkey D. Dragon, the leader of the revolutionary army is Luffy's dad. Oh, it is a genius at hinting at the future, man. It takes as little as making Luffy a dragon in a special episode to reveal a big detail in the actual series of One Piece. Now, staying on the subject of dragons, do you notice something a bit interesting on this chapter art cover? Oda features a pink dragon during this cover art, and as we all know, he loves to use cover art to introduce subtle hints or references to upcoming events in the story. And 300 chapters later, during the Punk Hazard arc, it is revealed that Momonosuke possesses the ability to transform into a dragon. And not just a regular dragon, you guessed it, a pink dragon at that. The pink dragon on the cover art serves as a visual reference and foreshadowing for readers. When they eventually see Momonosuke's dragon form, the connection to the earlier cover art makes a whole lot more sense. Very obvious indeed. But not as obvious as Kinemon's hate for dragons. Because we learn during the Punk Hazard arc, Kinemon and his fellow samurai Momonosuke and Kanjido encounter an artificial dragon created by Vegapunk. Kinemon's intense reaction to the dragon hints at his strong aversion to these creatures, and during the Zoo arc, the hatred for dragons is further seen when Momonosuke is revealed to have eaten an artificial devil fruit that allows him to transform into a dragon. Kinemon remains visibly uncomfortable and expresses his dislike. But all this foreshadowing leads to why he despises dragons. During the Wano arc, when Kaido, one of the four emperors of the sea, is revealed to have the ability to transform into a dragon, Kinemon's fear and hatred of dragons becomes justified as Kaido, a formidable and villainous figure, poses a significant threat to him and his country. Dude, the foreshadowing is amazing because it introduces a seemingly like small character trait early on in the story and then leads up to become one of the biggest details in the whole series. But I bet you missed this important detailed prediction about Ace's death. In card games, the spade is often associated with the symbol of death or bad luck. In a standard deck of cards, spades are the highest ranking suit. This symbolism is culturally ingrained and often used in literature and storytelling. Ace is the captain of the spade pirates and his name is literally associated with the Ace of Spades, which is often called the death card or the one-eyed death card in various cultures. This connection adds an ominous undertone to Ace's character just off of his name alone. And 
even tarot card imagery is used in One Piece, and the Ace of Spades in tarot is sometimes associated with transformation or a change, which can include death and rebirth. Ace's death and its impact on the story align with this symbolic imagery. And you just gotta appreciate Oda for bringing in so much real-world speculations into the series of One Piece. And there is a lot of speculation to integrate. It makes the world of One Piece way more relatable. Have you ever wondered what the S on Ace's tattoo meant? The crossed-out S serves as a subtle setup for a huge future detail. And at first glance, it may be dismissed as a design failure or a personal preference by Ace. However, it turns out to be a meaningful detail that hints at the existence of another brother with a name starting with S, which we were introduced to later on in the series after the war on Marineford, and it's revealed that Ace and Luffy indeed have another brother named Sabo. Sabo's name starts with an S, of course, explaining why Ace crossed out that letter on his tattoo. Sabo, originally thought to be dead, re-enters the story as a key character, and when you realize that Ace will never know that Sabo was alive the whole time, it just makes the whole thing that much more tragic. And I bet that you never noticed that we actually see Sabo alive at Luffy's execution during the Lugetown arc. Well, potentially. If you look really closely on chapter 98, you can see what seems to be a man with blonde hair wearing all black and a black top hat. Now, although this hasn't been confirmed, it makes a whole lot of sense because as we know, Monkey D. Dragon was at Lugetown during Luffy's execution because he was the one that saved Luffy from Smoker. So it would make sense that Sabo was there as well because at the time, Sabo was already running the ranks of the Revolutionary Army. Now, if we're gonna keep talking about huge family foreshadowing, we gotta talk about how this character's mom is one of the Emperors of the Sea. Lola was introduced during the Thriller Bank arc as a member of the Rolling Pirates, and when she meets Nami, she expresses a desire to form an alliance. Lola drops a significant hint when she tells Nami that her mother is a powerful pirate. At this point, Lola's mother is not revealed, but the mention of a strong pirate mother becomes a crucial clue. Much later in the series, during the Sabody arc, the identity of Lola's mother is revealed. It turns out that Lola's mother is Charlotte Linlin, also known as Big Mom, one of the four emperors in the world of One Piece at the time. Big Mom is a major character throughout the past couple of arcs, so for a, such a small detail to then relate to our huge character, literally, it makes Oda's foreshadowing and future predictions that much more crisp. And now that we're talking about emperors, I bet you missed when Oda literally told us who the future emperors of the sea were gonna be. You see, in recent times, it's revealed that Whitebeard, Big Mom, and Kaido are no longer emperors of the sea. They've now been overtaken, and now the new four emperors of the sea are Luffy, Shanks, Buggy, and Blackbeard. Now take a look at the cover for volume 25. It shows Buggy, Shanks, Blackbeard, and Luffy. Now this is too strange to be just a coincidence, and it is even more evidence on how powerful Oda's foreshadowing and storytelling through cover arts can be. And here's another example of amazing foreshadowing in chapter 555. Ace mentions that he learned to make straw hats in Wano. This might seem like a minor detail when you first read it, but it gains significance later in the series. Because as we know, it's revealed that Wano is known for its craftsmanship, including the creation of high quality straw hats. The country has skilled artisans who craft these hats, and yes, I'm talking about Otama. Finding out that Ace actually met Otama made the scene where she's mad at Luffy even more emotional and makes the whole Wano arc that much more important. I love how Oda strategically places hints and details that may not immediately make sense, but gain significance later. Like the mention of Ace learning to make straw hats is a subtle clue that connects with Wano later showing up as a major arc in the story, dude. Ah! Oh. But have you ever wondered how Momonosuke claimed to have met Goldie Roger when he was eight and Roger was already dead? In the Zo arc, Momonosuke claims that he met Goldie Roger. Initially, this statement was seen as a childish imagination thing or just a flat out lie to some viewers and readers. And even the crew and others around Momonosuke expressed disbelief and skepticism about his claim, given the time gap between Roger's era and the present. But as we read from Odin's journal, which was later revealed in the Wano Country arc, it contains crucial information about the road poneglyphs, including the one on Zo. The road poneglyphs are key to reaching Laugh Tail, the final island in the Grand Line, and where you can find the One Piece. And Momonosuke's claim gains more credibility as the crew discovers the importance of the information he might possess. Because the Wano Country is revealed to have been isolated for centuries, and it is a crucial location linked to the secrets of the entire world. The presence of the road poneglyph in Zo and Momonosuke's connection to this information becomes more significant, because later we find out that during the Wano arc, that Momonosuke's mother, Kozuki Toki, had a devil fruit ability in where she herself can travel through time, and as well travel other people through time. Knowing this, to save Momonosuke and the others, she had them travel 20 years into the future in order to stop the tyranny of Orochi and Kaido. But you might have missed this hidden detail that hints to Sanji being a member of Germa 66. During the Alabama 
Alabasta arc, the Straw Hats find themselves entangled in a conflict against the Baroque Works organization. And Sanji uses the alias Mr. Prince when he's talking with Crocodile on the Transponder Snail. The use of the title Mr. Prince is a subtle hint at Sanji's true identity and royal lineage. At this point, readers and viewers are unaware of Sanji's background, and the alias seems to be just another quirky Sanji moment, making him look cool, calm, and collected for the ladies. But much later in the series, during the whole Cake Island arc, it's revealed that Sanji is a member of the Vinsmoke family, the ruling family of Germa 66. So Sanji's full name is Vinsmoke Sanji, and he's the third son of the family. So in hindsight, the alias Mr. Prince takes on a whole new meaning. The use of the title Prince becomes a very clever play on words that no one would ever guess that there was a real meaning behind, as Sanji is indeed a prince. And another example of play on words that you might not have noticed is when smile fruits were actually mentioned way back during the Sabadee arc. During said arc, the Straw Hat Pirates and other Supernova crews gather around the auction house where they're bidding off slaves. Now, while the Supernovas are there to watch, the Straw Hats are there to save their friend Kami from being sold. And that's when we get this epic moment. But after they save Kami, we actually figure out that Doflamingo owns that auction house, meaning this man was selling innocent lives. But he then gets a call from the auction house manager talking about how all the slaves are released and he doesn't know what to do, so Doflamingo responds with this. Slave trade! Trading is getting old, idiot! This is the era of the smile. While Doflamingo doesn't explicitly mention smile fruits, the reference to smiles becomes significant later in the Dressrosa arc, where it turns out that smile fruits are artificial devil fruits created by Caesar Clown and Doflamingo, and they have the side effect of causing the consumer to have a perpetual smiling expression. And as well in the Dressrosa arc, it is revealed that Doflamingo is producing smile fruits on the island of Dressrosa. These fruits are a central element of the arc's plot as they're connected to the underground trade and the conflict involving the Don Quixote pirates, the Straw Hats, and other groups. Now, before we get into our last fact, make sure you subscribe and comment FUTURE so I know that you made it to the very end of the video. And finally, the last and possibly craziest One Piece prediction is when Luffy's Gear 5 Awakening form was hinted back all the way to Skypiea. In Chapter 300, you can see Luffy dancing around the fire at the feast after defeating Enel, but it looks quite familiar to this picture of Joy Boy. This proves that Luffy was meant to be Joy Boy, or is at the very least, a reincarnation of him, and will become the Pirate King and open the world.